the founder of Travel Time, World Travel Agents in Berkhamsted. Good morning to you, Jackie. Good morning, good morning. Oh, what a beautiful sound. We've got Jay McDonald in the background. We're all going on a cruise. This is welcome news, eh, Jackie? Absolutely. We're delighted to see that international cruising. As you're aware that there are lots and lots of ships sailing around our coast now. We've got Saga, we've got Viking, we've got Cunard, P&O, all going literally going nowhere apart from around the UK. And it's really buoyant, that market, already. I was going to say, domestic cruises have only, uh, have only been available up to now. How popular have they been over this period? hugely popular particularly with the silver traveler they love it it's like a resort on the water they've got everything they want there entertainment card games lectures food light shows fantastic i know some people who have been working on the cruises as entertainers and they say with the domestic cruises they're not they're not like going into and docking into hull or <laughs> grimsby no, they're, they're, just, they're just they're, they're just they're sailing past, they're just sailing past them and go oh there's Grimsby, and they carry on and say, it's beautiful, it's lovely. It's great. I mean, can you imagine then when International Cruises opens up, we're actually able to go to these ports of call. Mm. Do, you ex- do you expect to see bookings for the International Cruises to start coming through thick and fast? We're, we're already experiencing that already. Really? The, you know, 22, 23, and even 24 has been launched already. All great news, which is brilliant, but it does seem a bit odd that the government policy has been announced on social media. I'm absolutely furious on behalf of the travel industry. I think it's totally disrespectful and totally unprofessional that it should be a a government statement. There should be a press release. You people should know about it. It should never be released on social media like Twitter. I just think it's totally unprofessional. With all that that's been announced, are you generally optimistic about the outlook for travel now? Yeah, I mean, it is, we are seeing green shoots. Um, there's a lot of pent-up demand there. There, Unfortunately, the media and the government have sort of beaten down consumer confidence. Um, and so we've got to build that up again. That There's a lot of work, particularly on the cruise market and the airlines, to make it very safe to travel. And once you get on that plane and you land, I mean, it, it, you know, I travel quite regularly. And it's just this euphoric feeling when you get onto, you know, onto, the, onto foreign soil and you see the sea and it's just great out there. The, the big thing is for us punters and, and, and what's going to be hard for us to get our head around is, right, and I am going on the cruise next week. I am going, hopefully, fingers crossed. So am I. I'm, I'm, so am I. I'm on a river cruise. <laughs> it's the paperwork. There's a lot of paperwork that now has to be filled in, a lot of boxes that need to be ticked online. You need to, you need to get certain paperwork before they're allowed you on board and stuff. That's going to... That's going to be hard for us punters to get our heads around because we've been used yeah. to just rocking up to the airport and going straight through fast tracking, straight through, and within four minutes we're having our breakfast before we're boarding the plane. Those yeah. days are gone, I mean, have they? Well, that's right. I mean, that's, there's no time like now that you need a good professional travel agent to guide you through all that paperwork. We have it on our website, the concierge section there, and we sit with our clients and we guide them through. I mean, last week I spent three hours with clients going to Iceland, Beautiful trip, self-drive around Iceland. But we sat there and I talked them through. I helped them order their, their tests, even the video tests that they can do before they leave resort. So, yeah, there's no time now that you need a travel agent to help you through it all. The big thing for travelling around is proving your jabs and testing. What are the best oh, well, yeah. ways... What are the best ways to have that proof of, of, of your vaccinations? Because that little card that you get yeah. uh, is, is not accepted, is it? No, we, do, we have had some issues with that because, again, when you get that little card, they said, now, this is your proof of your vaccine. Actually, it's not. You need the COVID pass downloaded or, uh, on, uh, or on your phone as an app. Um, as you know, yesterday, um, I, I, well, I think a lot of people didn't, weren't aware that the UK government was not accepting European COVID pass. So but on a very personal basis, for health reasons, my husband lives Um, in our house on the Algarve during the winter season. He's been vaccinated with the Portuguese, yes, system. Same vaccine as me, probably manufactured in the UK. We live in the same household. He comes back to the UK. We go back to the same household. He up to to the 2nd of August would have to quarantine, whereas I don't. I mean, it's crazy. It's a ridiculous situation. You know, these are the same vaccines, the same regime. So, as I say, we're delighted that we actually have but we do need reciprocal arrangements. Because and, and, it is all changing. It does change 
like it's, it feels like it changes hourly, but it changes every other day and stuff. What's the best way of just keeping on top of everything? Where, where do people need to go? Well, I mean, we'd love it if the two, as a government site and the Foreign Office actually site, ran in parallel with each other because you get conflicting information. So the Foreign Office would say, don't travel to here, but then you find that it's on the amber list, yeah? Mm. So we'd like it if we had some parallel uh, between the two sites. But the government website or your local travel agent, I mean, we spend hours every day. That's all we're doing all the time is literally just keeping on top um, of what, what the regulations are. And you're right, they do change very often. Well, Jackie, thank you so much for joining us on the show this no, morning. And, and fingers crossed, this is, our, this is us getting back to normal, whatever normal yeah, is, and we're all, we're all going away on holiday. Yeah. Well, I'm on a flight on Monday again, so you know I'll be posting what it's like from the airport and actually telling you, you know, that there are no queues there, and, we, you know, and it is safe to travel. We've been doing it on the show this morning. What's the, what, what, what for you is the first sign that you're on holiday then? Is it when you're on that plane and you hear the, the engines wind up? I love the airport experience. All of a sudden, that credit card seems to just pop out my purse. And I'm there. I'm spending. You know, I love it. You know, things I would never even dream of buying. I go and buy a pair of shoes. I mean, you know, it's crazy. It's just lovely, the whole experience I've of got... get, getting away. We need a break. We need to get away. Jackie, I have more, more of those travel pillows than you could possibly imagine. <laughs> I'm so, so. Jackie, as yeah. always, have a lovely trip and thank you for joining thank us on the so show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. That, that was Jackie Stedman, who is the founder of Travel Time World Travel Agents in Burke Hampstead. Mm -hmm. <gasps>